In this lecture, we are going to discuss a processor which has only a single internal bus. So this is the bus which is internal to the microprocessor. So if this is the microprocessor, then the bus and the components of the microprocessor which are within that chip, we will be discussing that. This is not the bus which is external to the processor like the address bus or the data bus or the buses which are connected to the peripheral devices. So there is a program counter which we know which keeps track of the address of the next instruction. So this is connected to the internal bus. We have a memory address register. This is connected to the internal bus taking input from it and also connected externally to the address bus which is going to the memory. Then there is a MDR which is your memory data register. Again, it is connected to the internal bus as well as the external data bus. We can see that this MDR has two inputs and two outputs. So one input is from the external data bus and one input is from this internal data bus. Again, the outputs are two. It can send to the data bus and it can also send back to the internal bus. We have an ALU. We have these register, general purpose registers. So if there are n registers, so starting from R0 to Rn minus 1, these are the general purpose registers which are also connected to the internal bus. Then we have an instruction register which will take input from this internal bus and pass it on to the decoder and control logic which can then send signals, control signals. So the IAR is supposed to keep the instruction, reg uh, instruction which is currently being executed and once this instruction has been received in the IAR, it is sent to the decoder and control logic which will decode the instruction and generate appropriate control signals. Now apart from these, we also see there are certain temporary registers. We are, they are Y, Z and temp. This Y is connected to the input of a multiplexer and the other input of the multiplexer is connected to a constant 4. The output of the multiplexer goes into one port of the ALU and the other port is getting input from the internal bus. The computations that are done in the ALU, the result is put in the Z register. And there is another temporary register which might be required by the processor for any temporary storage of data. So the constraint in this single bus organization is that at any given time, that means in any clock cycle, only one of these units can put the data onto the bus. So let's say if MDR is putting the data onto the internal bus, so in that same clock cycle, no other unit can put data onto the bus. Though anyone can take data from the bus. So in the same clock cycle, only one unit can output on internal bus but any number of devices can take data from that internal bus. So in any such organization where multiple units are connected to a bus, how do we control that which device will take in data and which device will output data onto the internal bus? So right now we have shown like R0 as being connected to the bus in a bi-directional manner, manner that means it can take data and can output data also, but actually there is a control signal associated with each of these units. So if this is the register R0, there is a control signal R0 in which will allow data to come from the bus into R0. If R0 in is not enabled, that means if it is zero, then even if data is here, it cannot go into R0. Similarly, if R0 wants to put data out onto the bus, R0 out has to be enabled and then only the contents of R0 can be sent to the bus. Similarly, let's say there is register Y, the temporary register. It can be taking data from the bus 
only when this control signal by in is enabled also alu can send the result of the computation in z only if z in is enabled and z can output on to the internal bus only if z out is enabled so similarly each of these units that are connected to the bus they have these appropriate control signals which will control their taking data from the bus or putting data out onto the bus so why do we have this constant 4 as an input to the multiplexer in this processor we are assuming in this system we are assuming that every instruction is of 4 bytes of length and the memory is byte addressable so if we have to increment the pc to point to the next instruction pc has to be incremented by 4 and so that constant 4 has been put over here if the memory was word addressable then the program counter would be updated by one address every time and then we can put a constant of one in this case so that pc can increment it to point to the next word this select will allow either this constant 4 to go pass through the alu or if it is a select y then this contents of y will pass through the a marks into the alu so depending on this select signal whether it is select 4 or select y the appropriate contents will be sent to this port of the alu now depending upon the number of operations that the alu can perform there will be these control signals that will be given to the alu let's say the alu can perform 16 operations like add or not subtract multiply so these 16 operations can be controlled by either 16 control lines one for each operation or we can encode this and have four control lines and in that case each combination of these four control lines will specify one operation let's consider this instruction fetch so we know that every instruction goes through the fetch decode and execute cycle so let's see first how the fetch will happen so since the instruction has to be fetched the program counter has to send the address to the memory address register because from memory address register the address will be sent out to the address bus so for this to happen what will be the sequence of the control signals so this is the control sequence pc out that means the contents of the pc have to be put onto this bus for them to go to this mar so we will put enable this control signal pc out so the contents of pc now go onto the bus we have mar in so this control signal mar in will allow the contents of the bus to go into mar and we are assuming that as soon as mar in is enabled this external port is also enabled and the bus can have the contents over here and the address bus will take that address to the memory we will send a read control signal which tells the memory that it is a read operation now also we want to increment the contents of pc to point to the next instruction these contents are already available on the bus because the program counter has put them onto the bus so in the same clock cycle we can take these pc contents and we can send this constant 4 via the marks into the alu and do pc plus 4 and put the result in z so for that pc is already available on the bus we do a select 4 so that 4 can come onto this port over here we do an add operation and we enable the input of z by doing a z in control signal can we output on the same the can we output this pc plus 4 onto the bus in the same clock cycle no 
because the constraint is that at any given clock cycle or any given time only one unit is allowed to put on the bus and in this clock cycle PC out is already there. So the contents of program counter are already there. So in this clock cycle Z contents cannot go onto the bus. So in the next clock cycle we do a Z out. This is the control signal. So PC plus 4 was here. This will now be put onto the bus. It will be taken inside the program counter through this bus by enabling PC in. At the same time we also send this PC plus 4 into Y, one of the temporary registers. Why we are doing this I will explain later. So what we have done is that the updated contents PC plus 4 we have sent to the program counter but at the same time also put in this temporary register Y. Then there is a signal which says WMFC which is wait for memory function complete. So because this address has been sent to the memory it is going to take at least one clock cycle to bring the instruction back. And when the memory completes its task it sends a memory function complete signal to the processor. So this signal memory function complete will be sent by the memory to the processor when the memory has finished its task. So we have to wait for that signal. So we are waiting for that memory function complete signal. It will take at least one clock cycle if that instruction is found in the cache. But if it is not found in the cache then it is going to take more clock cycles if the main memory is accessed. Till the time this, this signal is received from the memory further instructions, further signals or further micro instructions will be put on hold. So the further actions will not happen till this instruction is received from the memory and the processor knows this because it has received a MFC memory function complete signal. So we are waiting for that signal. If that signal is received we have enabled the MDR in external. So this is the MDR in external because this is the external bus and this is the internal bus. So we have enabled the external input. So the instruction has now come into MDR. Now from MDR we have to send it to IR but we cannot do it in the same clock cycle through the bus because in this cycle we have already done a Z out. So in the next clock cycle there will be an MDR out. So MDR out will put the contents of MDR which is the instruction onto the bus and from here it will go in IR in. So we have enabled this signal and the now at the end of this instruction fetch cycle the instruction is available in the instruction register. From here it will be sent to the decoder and control logic in the decode stage. So this is the instruction fetch control sequence. In the next lecture we will be discussing data transfer and arithmetic instructions.